Now this is another interesting thing. Okay, it's nothing but a, just like a camera. Okay, it's scanning your finger. Uh, how to say fingerprint? Like the you know, everyone has different fingerprint. Okay, so what is inside the fingerprint? You can see here in the picture. There are some cutting point like. So in fingerprint, there are some cross point or there are some, how to say, you can see, you can see here, there are some like this kind of, this kind of part is available. Okay, like you have a fingerprint like this, okay, these kind of things are available. And also there are, this kind of shape is also different, okay. Different type of people have different type of shape, like if someone have this kind of shape, okay, it's not like this, okay. so. He have a fingerprint like this, okay? Someone have this two or three coil inside the fingerprint, okay? It's measuring that points, okay? You can see here, it's measuring the intersection or the, uh, I'm just saying coil type structure. If it finds that structure or it finds in which zone, you can see in this picture very clearly, okay? It can be identified by using some uh, AI algorithm or even some even uh, rule based algorithm, it can find the zones, how many intersection or how many these kind of coils are available. First, it measure that point, then it measures like if my finger have the same pattern, fingerprint have the same pattern, that means the distance and the uh, 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 how to say points will match okay it, it will not it will not match the whole lines no it will just match the position of my this kind of special points okay if the position match then the fingerprint match okay so by using this kind of technique you can again if you want to implement this thing you have to read on the other details okay so here is another issue lidar commonly used in car okay or autonomous car here you can see a number of lidars are here three four lidars are used in a single autonomous car application okay this is the same technique the light is coming you can see on the top figure the light is coming and it's measuring the intensity how much light is coming back okay from which direction by measuring this direction and the intensity of uh, how to say the reflected light it's measuring the distance on each point as I told you maybe on a few lectures back like it's measuring each point like from here left to right then uh, bottom to up okay just like a scanning okay just like a scanning just like a scanning so it's scanning 360 angle okay very very expensive sensor so you can see here Uber is also trying to develop this kind of autonomous car to use on the road now there are some water and underwater sensors you can see these sensors very you can understand this sensor very easily you can you see there are a number of conductive lines and when the amount of water increased the conductivity increased when the water level decreased the conductivity decreased okay, that is the main concept of this water level sensor and rain sensor is the same when any rain drop uh, how to say <coughs> dropped on the conductive lines then the resistance get decreased okay conductivity increased and when there is no drop of water the resistance increased okay so by using this characteristic range sensor also can be used the steam sensor is the same okay there is a conductive lines when steam came that means the amount of water comes conductivity increased when the when less water the less steam means conductivity decreased okay the same technique used all in all these kind of sensors okay. soil moisture sensor is the same inside the soil if the amount of water increase the conductivity increased and if there is no water that is dry when it's dry no conductivity okay that is the 
So all these things are using the same technique, okay, very, very cheap technique. And there are some other underwater sensors. I don't know the technology behind it. Just I am just mentioning you. You can study and you can you know, you can figure it out how these things work. Okay, one is pH and alkaline sensor. These are expensive sensors. When we are planning to build a project on ETP, as I uh, maybe I didn't mention you. Okay, so that means the industry are polluting our water. They are. Uh, wasting the water directly from the industry. So, the government enforced them to purify that water first. Okay? So, when we are preparing an autonomous system to measure this thing, that time uh, we are studying this kind of sensors. Okay? I don't know the technology behind it. I am just showing you some, uh, some sensors like that. So, one is pH and alkal alkalinity sensor. One is dissolved oxygen sensor. That means the amount of oxygen inside the water very expensive sensor okay one is biochemical oxygen demand okay so for water pure water it requires some oxygen it is actually the reverse of this sensor okay here is the dissolved oxygen sensor and this is the biochemical oxygen demand okay so what is the demand of the oxygen according to the chemical property inside the uh, what inside this water okay so this can be measured by this kind of sensor. So here, uh, biochemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, and turbidity and total suspended solid solids is also can be measured. That means the TSS means the uh, uh, in 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 Bangladesh say ghola koto ghola pani. Okay, so it's um, when there are number of solid materials inside this water. It will become more dirty. It looks more dirtier. Okay, and also that uh, visibility is another important issue for this kind of uh, water. Okay, so this sensor can measure all these three things. This is also available in the in the target market. So, and this is uh, dissolved solid like S and turbidity only for using <coughs> only for measuring this turbidity and the dissolved solids. Okay, so again the same thing as I told you on previous slide like the uh, color of the water how much solids are mixed inside this water okay so first you have to you have to clean the water by using some filter or just keep the water for a few time the waste will go down so by using this kind of filters or this kind of technique you can uh, you can handle it but the sensors is available electronic sensor is available in the market to measure it okay so by using this kind of sensor we can uh, ensure the implementation of ETP very easily. Okay, chlorine sensor, the amount of chlorine inside the water, this is dangerous for the fish and other uh, <clears throat> water life. Okay, so yes, th this can also measure the chlorine. And this one is electrical conductivity sensor inside the water. Okay, so if different type of materials come here, the okay, conductivity changed. Okay, so there is standard conductivity of the water. Okay, so you have to ensure that thing. So this is also available. So, this kind of sensors are available for measuring the underwater characteristic. Okay. So, whenever you will design a uh, ETP, okay, or uh, this kind of things, you can consider these kind of sensors, but these are expensive. We, we didn't work with these kind of sensors, but these are available in the market. And also, I don't know the technology or the science behind these sensors. If you have interest, please study yourself and identify what kind of uh, material is used or what kind of engineering is used to uh, build this kind of sensor. Thank you very much. This was the last part of sensors. Uh, uh, I understand the interfacing, in interfacing, perceiving the environment is one of the most important part to do some job or do some activity or display something. Okay. So sensor is one of the most important part of uh, interfacing course. Okay, some sensors are just discussed here. You can see some means a number of sensors, but a number of sensors, hundreds and hundreds of sensors are there. You will just write sensors in Wikipedia. You will find there are three, four hundreds of different type of sensors are available over here. Okay. 
So whenever you design a system, a digital system, or a robotic system, or a industry automation, whenever you want to think about the automation, please try to look for few sensors, like what type of sensors can be used to make this kind of automation. It will help you a lot. Okay. So uh, in computer science and engineering and electrical engineering in both sector, I think whenever you will be now the world is transforming, autonomy will come. That means autonomous system will come okay beside the ai understanding the environment perceiving the environment will play a very very important role okay so some of you must study the sensor okay must study the material science must study on the technical engineering how by using our existing sensor we can measure or we can understand our surroundings. That is very, very important. Thank you very much for listening with patience.